Good morning YouTube and welcome back to Just Get a Tesla. I've got a question. Is the granny charger actually worth having? Let's find out. I'm asking the question because I've never even used the granny charger on this car. I've literally not even pulled it out of its little bag which I've got stored in the front. Now this kind of charger I am familiar with. So my Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, I used the three pin granny charger like this all the time. That was the primary charging method uh, that I had. But that was a small battery, 13.8 kilowatt hours. Um, this is an 82 kilowatt hour battery. So how much charge do you get from the granny charger? I do believe that in some markets, they are actually going to start charging you for one of these. But is it worth it? Let's get it unwrapped. One quick change later, and I've got all of the um, packaging off it. So it's a chunky old thing. The Mitsubishi one wasn't anything like as big as that with a fabulous looking proprietary connector uh, on the end. So let's, let's get all of this plugged in. ready to go. So I have got external power so I can just plug straight into there. <laughs> this is really tightly coiled together. Wow. <laughs> Come on. Is this going to reach? No. So what I've done now is gone into the shed and pulled out my extension lead. This is a 15 meter extension lead. There is a debate, shall we say online, about the sanity of using extension leads for charging EVs. And I know there are several EV manufacturers who say you absolutely shouldn't do it. And I think the reason for that is that they can't vouch for the safety of the cable. Well, there's two basic principles. This is a 13 amp cable. A lot of the extension cables, especially if they're in a plastic reel, are only 10 amp. That is not enough current certified through the cable to be any use. So you don't want one of those. You want a 13 amp one like this. And then the other thing to do, of course, is to completely um, unwind it so that it's not all coiled together like this. That generates an electric field, which generates heat, which generates man's red fire. So I have plugged my cable in. I have completely uh, unwound it so that it's loose. I've plugged the granny charger into the end and we're gonna plug it into the car. Come on car. Is this because the car's locked? Yeah. Let's see how much power that actually delivers. Because I'm betting that it isn't a lot. So, first thing I need to do <laughs> is to turn off schedule charging so that it starts charging now. So as you can see, my car is low on charge. It's showing four miles or 1%. It was on three when I got home last night, but it's dropped uh, a couple of degree, a couple of um, percent overnight. So on 10 amps, it is telling me that it is taking me 24 plus hours remaining 24 hours more than that remaining eight miles an hour of charge at 10 amps on 240 volts i think again there's some terminology points to make here i know that um some american viewers will be thinking hmm, 240 volts that's a level two charge it's not it's just that we have got proper power in Europe and not some piddly 110 volt setup. So you can change the amount of amps that you're drawing. So this is taking 
10 amps and that's the maximum that it will deliver on the granny charger and honestly I wouldn't even leave it on that in a lot of uses. I'm connected to an outdoor socket which has been installed by an electrician um, that is spurred off my 32 amp uh, charger and has got an enormous cable and an enormous fuse on it that can cope with literally anything that we throw at it but you know the idea about this kind of charging setup is that you are plugging in at your granny's house hence the name granny charger or you're plugging in at um, hotel accommodation or a guest house or somewhere where you unexpectedly need to charge I would suggest that the thing you need to be careful with there are the electrics going into the socket that you've plugged into. So 10 amps, continuous charge for 10 amps for more than 24 hours, that is not necessarily a good thing for some people's uh, electrics. So you might want to knock it down to six amps, as I've done now. Um, I'm now getting a charge rate of five miles an hour so i've got or four i've got um normally a 90 percent charge a range of 293 miles and there's four miles in the battery and it's adding four miles an hour that is going to take a long time to charge so based on a 293 mile range are at 90 percent which is there thereabouts I need to add 289 miles of range until it has reached the charge limit. If it's only adding four miles an hour at six amps, it's going to take 72 hours to charge the car. 72 hours. That is a long, long time. Let's put it back up to 10 amps. So at 10 amps, it is now charging at eight miles of charge per hour. So my 72 hours charging has now become 36 hours of charging. That's a big difference, clearly. It's now a day and a half instead of three days, but it's probably not practical. So the granny charger, honestly, with the size of the battery in this, I'm not sure how much use it is because even if you are um, even if you are charging the thing overnight and you can take 10 amps, you know, a 10 hour charge is going to add 80 miles. And OK, 80 miles is useful. But realistically, if you haven't got a 13 amp extension cable and proper wiring, I'd have it down on six amps. And at six amps, you're adding four miles an hour. So your overnight charge is adding, what, 40 miles of range? which isn't very far. So you really are better with not just a Tesla, but with any modern EV that's got a mahusive battery, you are better off looking for a proper wall charger that you can plug into. Let's see what the difference is now. I'm gonna go and swap the charging over. I've put the granny charger and my extension cable away and I'm now going to plug in from my QBEV wall box and we'll see how much of a difference that makes. I do have an issue sometimes. Ugh. Water. An awful lot of water which is accumulated in the end of my charging cable. Hmm. Give it a blowout. Top tip, boys and girls. There was a whole load of water in the connectors there and it won't make the slightest bit of difference because despite the fact that you have got a whole chunk of water being tipped out of the car, it is still going to get on and start charging. Okay, we are now plugged in and getting a slightly more uh, realistic 32 amps. And it's still telling me that it's going to take basically 12 hours 
to complete the charge. Remember, this battery was flat. Not completely flat, but it's the lowest I've run this thing down. 1% um, remaining overnight isn't great. I know people have done tests where they have run the battery below zero miles and they've still been able to do you know 10 20 miles or so with driving i didn't want to get it down that far um, but i wanted a low battery for this test so that i could demonstrate to you how long it would take so plugged in at 32 amps on my cube air wall box i am adding 29 miles an hour at 32 amps and that means that it will be full in about 12 hours and when I say full, I mean the daily charging limit that's recommended, which is 90%. So 12 hours on a 32 amp wall charger or a seven kilowatt public charger, which again is, is um, close enough to 32 amps. That is slow, but usually you're plugging the car in overnight and that's not a problem. I didn't charge overnight quite deliberately so that I could make this video for you and show the different charge times. So this is 12 hours at 32 amps. When we had it running at 13 amps, if you remember, it was 36 hours. So it's adding a whole day onto the half day that it's gonna to take to charge this now. So you go from uh, 12 hours up to 36 hours. And then if you remember at six amps, which was the safety charging power if you are unsure about the socket that you've plugged into or the electrics that go into the socket that was going to take 72 hours to charge now i know i'm going to get some comments um, about how this proves that evs are no good because oh i can fuel up my v8 in five minutes and then i can do another 300 miles or whatever it is great but remember most of the time EVs are charging whilst you're sleeping. Most people do not drive their car 24 hours a day. Most people have lives and do other things. And while they're doing those other things, the car is plugged in and it's charging. So it really isn't an issue, but a little bit of planning is needed if you're going to be going somewhere that's fairly off grid without any kind of public chargers where you have got to plug in um, and charge it off the granny charger. And especially if you are my American viewers, hi y'all, um, where you only get 110 volts anyway, at which point six amps is pretty much all you're gonna get. And a 72 hour trickle charge is a bit on the painful side. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Just Get a Tesla. Please like and subscribe. Subscribing is really important, but I think on this one, share the video. Share the video if you've got anybody else who's got uh, an EV, even if it's only for the, the message about extension lead charging or about reducing the amps that you're drawing continuously. Share the video because it really could help stop a fire. But I will see you very soon on the next one.